First story. My brother did a prank on my birthday when I was nine. So I repeated the same prank on his wedding day. Now he is accusing me of scatting on his wedding cake, blaming me for his fiancé breaking up with him, and threatening to take legal action involving forensics. Just to be clear, I didn't actually do anything to the cake. But I'll just start from the very beginning, I guess. Growing up, my brother and I would play pranks on each other. I tell each other he would prank me, relentlessly. Any of you who are younger siblings will know that there will be that one particular moment that often comes up even as you get older that, hey, remember when? Story they'll retell to cackle at something devilish they did to you as a child. Our story was about a jar of cookies. Grandpa was an amazing baker, and he made me a batch of cookies for my birthday ninth birthday, I believe, which he'd seal in an airtight glass box for me. I don't know how or when, but my brother got a hold of this box and proceeded to, well, fart in it, then sealed it back up. On my birthday, he handed me the cookie box and said, Grandpa put some extra stank into this batch. I didn't know what he meant in the moment. I was too excited to try what looked like delicious cookies. I opened the glass lid and got blasted in the face by the stench of stale arse, then immediately threw up in the jar, all over the cookies. A tale my brother has told repeatedly to his delight since. Fast forward to now. My brother's wedding day. This wasn't a thought-out plan. I hadn't been scheming over it. It was spur of the moment. My brother had refolded the story yet again at his bachelor party three days prior to embarrass me, and I guess the story was just fresh in my mind. The ceremony is over, all went well, and on to the reception. They're posing for photos before cutting the cake, and I don't know why it came to me, but I just leaned over to my brother as his wife was about to take a bite and said, I put some extra stank into the cake. I thought he'd laugh. He did not. With the reflexes of a mother leaping across to rescue her newborn from something dangerous, he slapped the cake out of her hands. There were some gasps, some laughs. No one really knew what was going on. Me included. He whispered in her ear. She looked me in the eyes for a good five to ten seconds. Then I just started to cry. She runs off. Everyone is confused. Then my brother confronts me. He thought I did a SHT in the cake as revenge for the cookies. I told him I didn't, and it was just a dumb joke. But he was too mad to listen. She told her bridesmaids I did a SHT in the cake. Sure enough, soon everyone thinks I SHT in the cake. I was too embarrassed to protest, so I just went home. It's been a week, and I've not spoken to them or anyone else from the wedding barring my wife, and I keep feeling guilty, even though I didn't actually do anything. Am I the arsehole? Edit. I'd have liked to have responded individually, but this received a bit more attention than expected. Thank you for all the responses, of all kinds. The only person I could really discuss this with so far was my wife who of course will always be on my side. I couldn't tell friends in case they jumped to the same irrational outcome as my brother, so I didn't really know if I was the arsehole or not. As relieved as I am that the majority here agree I wasn't in the wrong, I do still take on board the criticism from the other side. It was probably a very poorly timed moment to make that joke, but like I said, I didn't scheme away at doing this. It was impulsive. However, I have to take ownership of my actions nonetheless. A few of you have said you'd be interested in an update. I'm unsure of the sub's rules regarding this, but I am going to try and speak with my brother tomorrow after work. So I will post something if allowed once we have spoken, and have, hopefully, smoothed things out. Update deleted but recovered. I don't know if these are allowed, but people expressed interest, so if it's against the rules, just remove it. I'm also unsure how to link the previous post to this one, as I am not the most tech-savvy, so just check my account. A quick summary for anyone reading, but unfamiliar with my first post. I made a poorly timed joke during my brother's wedding reception, as a spin-off a practical joke he played on me. No one was amused, and I was accused of doing something disgusting. Most people here agreed he overreacted, and I wasn't the arsehole, but some thought I should apologize anyway, which I took on board, so I reached out to my brother after a week of total silence. I'd like to say it went well. It did not. I texted my brother to come to my house after work so we could talk. He bluntly accepted. We didn't really get to talk though, because as soon as he pulled up in his car, he started yelling at me on the driveway. It turns out my prank messed things up more than I realized. After I left the wedding reception with my tail between my legs, they got into some kind of argument and didn't even go on their honeymoon, for which he blames me. He is still maintaining, I took a SHT in the cake. And the reason is something that a lot of people here realize that my naive nine-year-old self didn't. He did a SHT in my cookies. I obviously didn't get the specifics mid-argument, but it came out that's what he did. 
I don't know how, as it was a glass box. So you'd have seen if someone parked a turd on top. I can only assume he smeared it along the bottom as some type of paste, so people would think it was just chocolate oozing out. When he vomited in the box, he got away with blaming it on a stale fart. He thinks I figured it out and SHT in the cake as revenge. I tried defending myself here. In fact, some of your responses helped. How would I do this? Is the baker in on it with me? Did I pull off some elaborate ruse to get access to the fully formed cake to SHT in it? He wasn't having any of it, though. He says he knows ISHT in it, and he's going to get the cake forensically tested to prove it. He's even threatening legal action. Eventually my wife had to intervene at the shouting match on our doorstep, as he was getting increasingly aggressive, and she was worried he may get violent. She got rid of him, and I just went back inside to try and process it all. I got in touch with his wife a few hours ago, as people's responses made me realize that even though my brother may be an arsy hole, her big day was definitely soiled by my actions, and that wasn't fair. Thankfully, she seems a lot more forgiving than him. We spoke on the phone for a while, and she knew the truth about the cookies SHT, not farts, which is why she believed him when he said I SHT in the cake. But as they argued through the night, she realized that I was innocent. I didn't want to pry, but it sounded like there had been relationship problems in the lead up to the marriage anyway, and his overreaction was just the tipping point. She's moved out, and is staying with her parents now. And I suppose my brother finds it easier to pin the blame for these problems on me than reflect on his own behavior. I brought up my brother's claim about testing the cake, and she actually laughed, which reassured me that he's the only one thinking about such desperate measures. In conclusion, I may have been ruled not the arsehole, but my actions have ruined a marriage. She's moving out, my brother is lawyering up. They're getting an annulment, and I may, or may not, receive a subpoena asking me to poo in a box. Second story. Entitled wife of seven years cheated on me, humiliated me along with her affair partner, then tried gaslighting but forgot I'm a private investigator. So I divorced the garbage and cut ties with her, exposing her affair partner's wife. I 35M have been married seven years to my 33F wife, no kids. Two years ago, she started a new career and has been very successful. At the time she started, she mentioned a man that she works with, but said on more than one occasion that he was a jerk and she didn't like to work with him. Since then she has softened a bit and really doesn't mention him much. I felt like I had no reason for concern. I've always trusted my wife, and although our marriage is not perfect, I felt like we got along pretty well. Fast forward to about a month ago, and I started noticing some changes in behavior. She was texting a lot more and never letting her phone leave her side. She seemed to have more things going on at night and on the weekends. She became cold toward me and wouldn't reciprocate any affection and she lied to me several times about strange things. The last lie was when she was packing for a business trip, and I noticed she had purchased a new, much more revealing bathing suit than anything I'd ever seen her wear. I asked her about it, and she said she ordered it online not true, and once she tried it on, she decided it wasn't appropriate for a business trip to Florida with her colleagues. So she leaves for the trip and takes the bathing suit. While she was gone, I decided to do a little digging. I'd never in our entire relationship ever gone through my wife's things, but I'd had enough of all the lies. In one of her work bags, I found a drawing someone had done of her, almost like a caricature, but it was done on paper from a hotel. I also found a post-it note with driving directions to her male co-worker's house written in her handwriting. I went through our bank statements and found that many times when she was supposedly at work, she was out to different restaurants around the city. This was enough for me to investigate further. I'm a private investigator by trade and ethically, I have no problem invading someone's privacy when confronted with reasonable suspicion of wrongdoing. I placed a GPS tracker in her car legal in my state, since the car is titled in my name. The Sunday after she got back from her trip, she told me she was going to work at a coffee shop and run some errands. Her car never came within one mile of a Chipotle, but when she got home, she walked in holding a Chipotle cup and confirmed she had eaten there. Then on the following Tuesday, she told me she had to go to a company dinner and would be working late until the dinner. The GPS showed her leaving work at 3.20 p.m. and driving to the restaurant, where her car remained until 9 p.m. The final straw came on the next Saturday. We were supposed to watch my niece play tennis at 8 a.m. She said she wanted to drive separately, so she could leave from the venue and go work at a coffee shop. After the match, she told me she was heading to X coffee shop, and added a few details about why she wanted to go to that coffee shop. I said have a good day and went to my vehicle. On the GPS, I watched as she drove directly to a Comfort Inn motel. 
I got to the Comfort Inn and waited in an adjacent parking lot until I could confirm she was actually in the building and not sitting in her car. I called her from the lobby and asked, How is X coffee shop? She said it was good. Why? The only other thing I said was come down here so we can get this over with. Once she came down, she said these exact words. It's not what you think. He has to do this because he's been caught with other girls before. I asked what she was talking about, and she said that he always works in hotel rooms. She said that they didn't do anything physical, and that's when I told her to get out of my car. I drove away, and she called 50 times. I finally answered, and I told her if she tells me even one lie, I'm hanging up. She said that they did kiss once about five months prior, but that it was a mistake and didn't mean anything. She said again that they were just working. I asked how many times she had met him in hotels, and she said about ten over the last nine months. I then asked what she did on that Tuesday, and she became defensive. She said she was at work all day until the work dinner. I called her a liar and hung up the phone. She showed up at our house, where I was loading up my car with my belongings and my dog. She stood in the driveway refusing to move until I talked to her. She was in hysterics, crying and apologizing. I moved out that day and have been gone for a month. We have met a few times for her to try to explain things. However, when it becomes my turn to ask questions, she becomes very upset, gets defensive, and says things like answering these questions isn't good for the relationship. She's also lied about several of the details, even when the details seem completely inconsequential. I've called her on the lies, and she accuses me of trapping her by asking questions I already know the answers to. Through all of this, she has remained constant that this was not a romantic relationship. She said that she became really good friends with this man, and that he was helping her with her career. She admitted that their conversations would become inappropriate when they would talk about our marital issues. She's admitted to texting him and deleting the texts, saying that they weren't romantic, but could be seen as flirting. She said that she has been depressed for a really long time, and he was good at talking her out of those feelings and encouraging her in her work. I know I'm being mind effing, but there's a part of me that believes her. It may be that I want to believe her because I love her or I'm afraid of the truth. I'm really hung up on finding out the truth. But the reality is I don't see any way that I can get over the facts that I do know. So why does it matter? Am I losing my mind? Update. We are a month out from D-Day. I spoke with her last night. And here are the highlights. I asked if she has talked to the man over the last four weeks. She said that he doesn't know that I showed up to the hotel one day and called her out. She said that she hasn't talked to him about the situation because this is an issue in our marriage and doesn't involve him. I asked if she has stopped all non-work-related communication with him. She said that she is tapering down. Tapering down. I lost it. She said she feels like she has to taper down, rather than have no contact, because he doesn't know that I busted her. Infuriating. She then lied about a completely insignificant detail. I called her on it, and I was 100% confident that she was lying. She denied to the point of yelling and never relented. I left it and chalked it up as one more unresolved issue in this saga. Update 2. After she told me she was tapering off social communication with the other man, I hid a voice recorder in my house and left. Last night, I reviewed the tape and discovered my wife, and this other man had spent well over an hour on the phone with each other over the course of at least two phone calls. My recorder died in the afternoon. I would assume they talked again in the evening, if not more. I didn't hear too many specifics from the phone call, but I did hear a few damning things. They talked for a while about the current state of affairs in our marriage something she claimed he knew nothing about. They talked about how to use the secret phone app on their phones so as not to be detected. She called me a DCK for showing up late for breakfast that morning. And they talked and laughed about a million other topics. I haven't heard my wife that giddy since we were dating. I confronted her about all of this, and she admitted some of it and denied other parts of it. I don't really care anymore. Update 3. For the past two weeks I have had no contact with my wife. A few days ago, she texted me and asked if we could talk. I told her, unless she's willing to confess to everything, that I was not willing to talk. She then said she knows I've wiretapped her phone didn't do it, but let her believe it, and that I already know everything. I told her I needed to hear it from her directly. She finally agreed to sit down and tell me everything. She came to my house and confessed that her relationship with the other man was indeed sexual, and that it had been going on for the past six months. She admitted that she purchased a hotel room one day before our anniversary to be with him. She also confirmed that she had continued talking to him after being caught, and he was helping her deal with my questions. She claims that she has now broken it off with the other man for good and wants to work on our marriage. 
This confession came six agonizing weeks after I caught her in the hotel. I believe the only reason she confessed is due to my persistence. However, she said that she was always planning to tell me, but wanted to make sure it wouldn't hurt either one of us too badly. The damage done during those six weeks is unsurmountable. Update. I'm back with an update finally. It's been an incredible two years. Keep your head up, everyone. Click my name for all the backstory. Basically, my wife of seven years had an affair with a coworker. Me, a private investigator caught her in a hotel with the guy, and she denied any wrongdoing. First, let me say this. If you're in this situation, and you're even remotely self-harming, don't do it. I say don't do it because if you do, you're going to miss out on the greatest time of your life. I mean that 100% sincerely. I know it's impossible to see when you're first going down this road. But trust me, don't miss out on this life. Now, the update. We got divorced. I took my time in making that decision. I wish I wouldn't have taken that time. But who cares? She wanted to stay together. For what reason I have no clue. She lied and gaslighted for an eternity. And that tore up any reconciliation possibility for me. It's the hardest thing I've ever gone through. During my marriage, I was all in. I wasn't perfect, but I loved my wife with all my heart and wanted to be with her forever. I would have done anything to make her happy, and I think I did on several occasions. Now that I'm away from that relationship, I can see it for what it was a narcissist crushing every ounce of energy out of a good person. That marriage was completely one-sided, with one person giving everything and the other person taking even more than could be given. By the end of the marriage, I truly thought I was worthless as a partner. She degraded my profession, my personality, and my looks. Since getting divorced, my business has flourished, and I've been able to date women that I would have thought were way out of my league. I seriously thought I was ugly in part because of the way my ex-wife made me feel. But now I'm having gorgeous women, much younger than me, approach me in bars. I've been in a couple wonderful relationships with great women. They ended amicably for general compatibility issues, but it illuminated how terrible of a partner my ex-wife really was. I don't have any contact with the ex anymore. I really don't even think about her very often. This divorce became contentious because she thought I was getting too much of the money, even though I was taking less than 50% because I wanted it to go smoothly without breaking up businesses and retirements. Can you imagine that? Cheating on someone then getting upset about the amount of money they're taking even though it's less than 50%. That hammered home for me that I was making the right decision and I needed to get away from this garbage as fast as possible. I lost friends in the divorce. Good riddance. Most took my side, but I don't care about those that didn't. They made it easy for me to jettison them. I lost my in-law family. This is one of the hardest parts. I really loved some of them, but I get it. I sent enough correspondence to a fair partner's wife that I'm 100% confident she knows. She never contacted me back, and I'll respect her decision. Some advice if you're fresh in this nightmare. Separate yourself from the situation. This is the only way you're going to be able to think clearly without being gaslit. Get professional help. I was in therapy for a long time. It helps. I'm so much stronger now because of it. Surround yourself with friends and family as much as possible. Make healthy choices. Go to the gym. Limit drugs and alcohol. Get outside and try to sleep. Take people's advice, but make your own decision. It's your life. There were some really dark days after D-Day. But after the initial heartache, it has been the best time of my life. I'm truly happy every day. If you're going through this and need some advice from a self-proclaimed expert, hit me up. I'm happy to help. A huge thanks to everyone here who helped me when I was struggling. Cheers. Third story. Mom changed the wedding cake behind her back and doesn't know that I know. What should I do? My fiancé and I get married this fall. And the cake has been a huge point of contention with my mom. Long saga. But the gist is that we wanted a dessert bar or cheesecake instead of a traditional cake. My mom initially insisted on having at least a small cake for just us to cut. We compromised and got quotes. Right before we put a deposit down, she decided that having just a cake for us and not for guests is tacky, so we needed to get a sheet cake to serve as well. We were annoyed because she was the one to suggest it, so we cut our losses and opted to do tiered cheesecake and mini cheesecakes, as we originally wanted. My mom would not let this go for the past six months. She then decided to focus on pushing for a groom's cake. My fiancé did not want one. When I told her this, she said it's really only a groom's cake in name and not about what he wants. I told her a firm no multiple times because she wouldn't give up. That brings us to this week. I got a text yesterday saying she was at the bakery and paid for the order. 
I got suspicious because I never included her in those communications. I called the bakery today and was told by a very apologetic employee that my mom had added a multi-tiered groom's cake with different fillings, flowers, the whole kit, and capital. We still have cheesecake, but I feel like it'll look silly next to what is essentially a wedding cake. My question now is, what do I do? She doesn't know that I know. I'm furious and hurt. Obviously it's just a cake, but it's not really about that now. She went behind my back and crossed multiple boundaries after I told her no. Am I being a bridezilla for not letting her have her traditional wedding cake? Update. Hello, again. A big thank you to everyone who gave advice on my original post. I'm now married and had the best. Most relaxing honeymoon with my now husband without any pesky family bothering us. By the time I posted, it was too late to cancel the wedding due to deposits and contracts. So it continued as planned. And to clarify. Yes, my parents did pay for the wedding. Although my husband and I made it clear several times that we did not expect or need them to pay for everything. No, I don't think they're paying excuses for my mom's actions. My parents reiterated that it was our wedding and we should do what we wanted. Clearly the cake was the exception to this, though she had previously said to get cheesecake if that's what we wanted. My husband and I got a laugh out of everyone's suggestions for how to handle the cake. Initially, I wanted to go the petty route and surprise my mom by calling the bakery to change the cake design to something she would find tacky that would reflect my husband's hobbies, you know, like a groom's cake should do. After taking a few days to weigh my options, I knew my desire for petty satisfaction would nuke my relationship with my mom, which had truthfully never had this dynamic up until wedding planning. I knew that she was absolutely the one in the wrong and acting like a child. And while I'm the actual child in the relationship, I wanted to be mature and handle this like an adult, if only for my own moral high ground. I communicated with my parents and listed all the reasons why this situation and others throughout the wedding planning process was hurtful and completely out of line. Shock of the century to everyone on Reddit. I'm sure it didn't go well. There was a series of texts I received from my mom that demonstrated she couldn't take accountability or comprehend that I wasn't mad that she ruined my wedding by ordering a cake, but rather that she went behind my back, knowing it would surprise and upset me on my wedding day. I attempted multiple times to redirect to the actual issue with little success. We ended the conversation with her apologizing for a cake, making my husband and me so upset. This obviously wasn't a genuine apology or the main issue, even if she thought it was. She also agreed to move the groom's cake to a meal we had the day before the wedding, which I was fine with. At this point, we were a week out from the wedding, and the thought of continuing to press the issue was too much for me to handle with everything else on my plate. I dropped the rope leading up to the wedding so I could refocus on enjoying my wedding as best as I could. I interacted with my mom as little as possible the day of and our wedding party and coordinator did a fantastic job being a buffer. While I've had some contact with her since, it has dramatically declined, so I can get some much-needed space. Obviously we'll need to have some tough conversations, but I'm choosing to spend my time with my new husband and getting back into therapy. First. Wedding. Man. They really bring out the crazy in people. Oh, and the cheesecakes were a huge hit. BTW. Update after one year. I'm back. With a one-year update on how my mom changed my wedding cake order without me knowing. People have reached out for an update, and coincidentally, I've had several friends get engaged who have similar family dynamics as mine. I've shared all of this with them, but I feel the need to blast this out online too. Now that I'm a year out, I can acknowledge that I love my husband and our life together. But having a traditional wedding was a big mistake. When I think back on our wedding day, I am devastated to admit that the few emotions I remember from that day were not how much I love my now husband and excitement over our future together, but anxiety over my mom and whether SHT was about to blow up. If you're recently engaged and have difficult family relationships, or aren't completely sold on shelling out a ton of money on a wedding, please let this be yet another loud voice yelling at you. Elope. Have a courthouse wedding. Don't invite problematic guests. Do whatever you want to do, but for the love of God, avoid that family drama at all costs. I wish I'd stuck to what I originally wanted eloping somewhere abroad, but alas, I made my decision and have to accept it. What I didn't mention in my initial posts was that my relationship with my mom immediately and irrevocably changed as soon as I became engaged. Even though I know she could be, a lot, I had no idea what I was in for. If I could do it all again, I would have stopped that wedding planning train in its tracks after the first few signs of craziness. The cake was, unsurprisingly, just the last straw of craziness that happened. Greatest hits include 
telling literally, and I mean literally everyone she knew that we were getting engaged. Less than 10 minutes after my husband told my parents he planned to propose upon sharing the proposal photos with her. Commenting on how big I looked in the photos which are, to this day, ruined for me told a family member, who commented on how beautiful I looked at a pre-wedding event. Yeah well she's gained a lot of weight, tried to crash my first look the day of my wedding, and acted hurt that she wasn't invited did crash my first look, and few a fit when my wedding coordinator wouldn't let her and made the wedding all about how she never had a say in anything, and that I was the controlling, immature one. So yeah, the moral of the story is to absolutely soak up the fresh excitement of getting engaged. But seriously, ask yourself if there's anyone in your life who will make wedding planning hell on earth. If you're so fortunate to have a character like that, have a plan to handle it and be prepared to enforce those boundaries. And for the extra crazy families out there, maybe just elope. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.